We have so many opportunities, so many challenges, and I feel that the ability for really smart, great people is a skill that will impact every single area of your life. The process of mastering decision-making will shape all of the outcomes in our life. Every single decision you make is going to take you one step closer to the life that you want or one step further away from the person you want to become. You can create so much more than you can even imagine, but you don't quite know it yet. That every single one of those failures, those challenges, those adversities are just learning opportunities that is getting you one step closer down the path that you need to go. Those challenges are not preventing you from success. They're getting you one step closer to success because you're developing strength discernment and wisdom in the process. Is it hard to make a bad decision? Yes, but you know what is also equally bad? To not make any decision at all. I would rather make the wrong decision and be wrong than to sit paralyzed in fear, not moving forward. So dare to dream, dare to decide, and dare to carve out your path. It's worth it, and so are you. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the show. I'm so glad you're tuning in today. As we record this, again, this one's from San Jose Cabo in Mexico coming to you, so you might have a little bit of echo, but I wanted to bring, you know, this is something that I've noticed is just everyone struggling with today. And so this isn't necessarily a business topic or something specifically related to investing that's really tangible and tactical, but I hope you're still gonna listen through as we talk about how to just master the art of decision making because we have so many opportunities, so many challenges, and I feel that the ability for really smart, great people, great entrepreneurs, great investors is a skill that will impact every single area of your life. Doesn't matter if it's a personal decision, a professional decision, even trivial choices. The process of really mastering decision making will shape all of the outcomes in our life. And fortunately, it's a skill that can be improved over time. So no matter who's listening, we've all made bad choices, bad decisions in our life. And I want to talk about some strategies and a few techniques that can help all of us just make better decisions, which will foster just a better, more fulfilling, more successful life. There was a recent study that shows that we make on average about 40 decisions a day, 40 different decisions every single day. Some of them are insignificant, some of them are pretty significant depending on what it applies to. So I think that this topic is really important not just to have a successful business, but to have a successful life because like I always say, the rich life is the intersection of ambition and appreciation. It's realizing that wealth isn't just a bunch of assets and a lot of money, it's it's being happy, it's having peace, it's having joy in our life. So I want to break down a few steps of how to make better decisions when you're at a crossroad or you're looking at a specific challenge. Because here's the thing, if you listen to nothing else, if you hear nothing else from this podcast, I'm going to give you one thing right now. Every single decision you make is going to take you one step closer to the life that you want or one step further away from the person you want to become. I'm going to repeat that every single decision you make. It doesn't matter how insignificant it is. It is taking you one step closer to or one step further away from the life and the person that you want to become. So having discernment when making decisions is going to amplify your life in so many areas. So how do we do it better? Number one, gather information. The foundation of any good decision is having accurate information thoroughly researching options available, whether it's seeking out sources or evaluating credibility, considering different perspectives, the more informed you are, the better equipped you'll be to assess the potential outcome and risk that's associated with every decision you make. Number two, this is so critical, define your goals. If you don't have clear objectives that is your guiding star of life, your decision making is going to be erratic. Identifying what you want to achieve in your life and then aligning the choices with these goals will make your yeses to things so much stronger and your noes will be more definitive and not second guess yourself so much. Number three is consider the consequences. Every single decision that we make has a consequence. Some are foreseeable, 
others are not. That's why it's important to take time to evaluate short-term and long-term implication of your choices. Consider how they can affect your life, your relationships, or future opportunities, because every single thing that you say yes to will create a no in another area. You wanna buy a big property, you wanna buy another house, you wanna build a big company, you wanna expand and scale to new locations. Those are all great things, but just also understand that that means no to other things. You might not be able to have as many date nights with your spouse. You might not be able to pick your kids up from soccer. Every single yes, even when it's the smart decision to make will have short-term and long-term implications. So it's important to consider your consequences and choose wisely. Number four is utilize decision-making tools. I absolutely love this. This is a model or a framework that can help you in organizing your thoughts and evaluating options. The SWOT analysis, which I use with all of my business clients, this analysis covers your strengths, your weaknesses, your opportunities, and your threats. It's a common tool that can help you assess pros and cons of every choice or decision or option that you're trying to weigh out. If you wanna learn more, just go ahead and Google SWOT analysis, and I'm sure there's a framework that you can find on Google in order to take you through. This applies to so many areas in your business, but also your life, and another one is called the decision matrix. This involves assigning weights to different factors and then scoring each option accordingly. These two tools will provide you a lot of structure and help you be objective in your decision-making process. Number five, if I could tell you anything that I've learned in the last 25 years, it is to trust your intuition. Data and analysis are absolutely crucial, but you also don't wanna discount your intuition. Oftentimes, our subconscious mind is really there to help us. It's processing information that isn't immediately apparent to our conscious thoughts. And sometimes we'll get this gut instinct, this intuition, if you will, that a certain choice may either resonate with you on an intuitive level, or you have some intuition that it's just not the right decision, even when the data supports that it could be. Even when everything objectively looks like this might be a good decision, if you have a gut instinct, if you have an intuition that you don't think that this is something that you should do, don't try to rationalize it. Don't try to explain it. Don't try to talk yourself into it. All of the decisions that I have made that have turned out poor, bad, horrible, all resulted in me ignoring my intuition. And in a world that we're moving so fast, that is so noisy, that there's so many distractions, it's oftentimes difficult to hear your intuition. And that's why I always teach, it's in my book as well, the pause reprogram. When you're involved with a difficult conversation or a tough choice to make, take one half of one second and pause. Don't speak, be in the silence, take three deep cleansing breaths. Allow your nervous system to reset. It might be something that you're excited about and that intuition is there telling you that maybe you shouldn't be doing this, but if you're always on the go so fast, your intuition can't keep up with you. It's like if your mind's always, your conscious thoughts are always going at 100 miles an hour, your intuition is softer, it's quieter, it's more wise, and oftentimes wisdom is quiet. Discernment takes time. So trusting your intuition is truly a tool that you can refine and it will serve you in every single aspect of your life. The best way to make a well-rounded decision is to balance intuition with rational thinking. And that really brings us to number six, which is embracing a growth mindset. Viewing decisions as learning opportunities, regardless of the outcome, will shift your life. I often get asked, what are some of the mistakes and the challenges that I face? And there have been so many, but I look at all of them as an opportunity to learn, to grow, to have a lesson from. And when you do this, you embrace a better perspective, which will alleviate the fear of making wrong choices. And it really opens the doors up to brand new experiences, better experiences, things that you can't even imagine. Because your view of what's possible for your life 
in this lifetime is based off of your past. It's based off of your history. It's based off of former experiences. You can create so much more than you can even imagine, but you don't quite know it yet because you have to adopt the growth mindset that every single one of those failures, those challenges, those adversities are just learning opportunities that is getting you one step closer down the path that you need to go. Those challenges are not preventing you from success. They're getting you one step closer to success because you're developing strength, discernment, and wisdom in the process. So embrace a growth mindset. This one shift can drastically change the rest of this year for you and obviously the rest of your life. Number seven, manage decision fatigue. When you are in constant decision making, it can lead to fatigue. It can cause a decline in the quality of your choices. And in order to counteract this, You need to prioritize, make sure you delegate, always delegate, eliminate and automate as much as you can in your life and in your business, delegate minor decisions to save the mental energy capacity for you to make more significant choices. And the way to do this is establishing routines for daily tasks so that you can reduce the number of decisions that you have to make. Look, if we only make 40 decisions in a day, you better make sure that they are top quality, important, significant decisions and don't major in the minor things. And always remember, you don't want to make life changing decisions when you don't have adequate rest, when you're not maintaining a healthy lifestyle, when you're fatigued, all of those things can cloud your best judgment. Number eight, don't hesitate to seek advice. Look, I'm not telling you to go online and post all the things you're going to do. Actually, I'm the person that tells you not to do that. Put your head down and do them behind closed doors. And then when you have the result, you talk about it. But it is really smart to seek advice from trusted friends, mentors with integrity, real experts that have experience in whatever it is that you're looking to do. They can really provide a different viewpoint or offer some insights that maybe you haven't considered. Number nine, avoid decision paralysis. We talked about decision fatigue, but decision paralysis is endlessly analyzing choices one over another, back and forth, up and down. When you are unable to make a choice due to overwhelming numbers of options, it's because you didn't do these first few things. Go back to defining your goals. What are the clear objectives for your life. Understand that there are only so many things that you can do in a month. There are only so many things that you can do in a quarter. There are only so many things you can do in a year. But when you play the long game and you compound time, you compound good decision making, you can accomplish more than you can even imagine. So if you struggle with analysis paralysis, set a time limit for your decision making and commit to making a choice within that time frame. Because remember, sure, is it hard to make a bad decision? Yes, but you know what is also equally bad? To not make any decision at all. And I would argue that the latter is far worse because personally, I would rather make the wrong decision and be wrong than to sit paralyzed in fear, not moving forward. When you move forward, you get more data, whether you like something or not. But when you're stuck in the same place, your mind comes up with all of these things. And then unfortunately, what happens is it keeps you stuck longer. Clarity comes from motion. Always move forward, even when you're not 100% clear if you're making the right decision, because the right decision will come to you as you're in motion. And remember, no decision is ever set in stone. Each choice that you make will contribute to your growth and your evolution, even if it's the wrong one. And the only way that people get stuck is because they have fear of the outcome. They have fear of rejection. They have fear of failure. They have shame around something or some other decision that they made. But when you're able to step forward with conviction and you use these tools, you can make better decisions that will ultimately create a better life in the future, the goals, the vision that you have and that you're worthy of. Look, I always say you don't need to be the smartest person in the room. You don't need to be the most connected. You don't need to be the most talented. But what you can do is control your effort, control your focus, and make better decisions, and then act with conviction. So dare to dream, dare to decide, and dare to carve out your path. It's worth it, and so are you.
All right, guys, that's it for today's episode. Go out and make it a great day. Thanks so much for tuning in with me. We'll see you next time.